So in this video I'm gonna show you some tricks and easy ways to find the opportunity cost and that is related to find a comparative advantage between two people, between the countries, but in this example I'm gonna use farmer and rancher model uh, that you can find it on your book. First, what we learned chapter 3, we learned that trade can make everyone better off. Trade can make not only everyone but countries better off too. And there are gains from trade. So the question is, where do these gains come from? The first explanation was absolute advantage, the ability to produce a good using fewer inputs. Here is very important, fewer inputs than another producer. If one country is using fewer input produce the same good, the other country produces, then there are gains from trade. So here, in this example, if there are two people, farmer and rancher, and they produce pork and tomato, the input they put to produce pork and tomato should be the labor hours needed to make one pound of each good. Okay, so the labor hours is the input. So first thing is you need to look at the table and see where you can find the input. This is the input. And what absolute advantage says? The production of one good. The person has the absolute advantage if he uses fewer inputs than the other person. Let's look at for pork. To produce pork, farmer needs six hours, rancher needs four hours. So as you see, rancher has the absolute advantage in the production of pork. Okay, so I choose that. That is absolute advantage. Let's look at for tomato production. As you see, I'm not looking the second part of the table. You should be careful. I'm looking at this first part here. The first part is here. Farmer needs 3 hours in production of tomato, rancher needs 4 hours. As you see, 3 hours, fewer inputs, so the farmer has the absolute advantage in the production of tomato. Okay, so if we just explain, try to explain this in terms of absolute advantage. Sorry. Okay, absolute advantage. You will say that farmer should specialize in production of tomatoes, rancher should specialize in production of pork. Now, let's look at now the second explanation because sometimes in some examples one person has the absolute advantage of the production of both goods. Then there's a problem because if one person has the advantage absolute advantage in the production of both goods then there's you may think that there's no room for trade but that's not true because the main reason there are gains from trade is because of the comparative advantage so what is comparative advantage the ability to produce a good at a lower opportunity cost than another producer so now we need to find the opportunity cost for each good for both people farmer and rancher okay uh, let's try first try to find if there are gains from uh, using absolute advantage argument. Okay, uh, let's see. For pork production, farmer uh, needs three hours to produce the pork. Rancher needs uh, four hours. So you may say that okay, farmer has the absolute advantage in pork production. And for tomatoes, farmer needs one hour and rancher needs four hours. So as you see again. In tomato production, farmer has the absolute advantage, so we may conclude that absolute advantage cannot explain the gains from trade. But we can check the comparative advantage, need to find the opportunity cost of each goods for farmer and rancher. Okay, so we have three ways to find the opportunity cost. Okay, I'm gonna use these three different ways uh, to find the uh, comparative advantage. So the first way is finding opportunity cost using input approach. So in this input approach on the table, what is given? The labor hours needed is given. So you have to check the question. Is that the inputs given on the table or how many output each farmer and rancher is given? So in this example, as you see on the top part of the table says labor hours needed to make one pound of pork and tomato and it's given as like three for farmer needs three hours rancher needs four hours farmer for tomato farmer needs one hour and rancher needs four hours so how we are going to find it is very easy the rule is other goes under so we want to find the uh, opportunity cost of pork 
Okay, the first thing is opportunity, cost of pork. So, the labor hours needed for pork is three, da, three hours, and farmer needs one hour to produce tomato, one pound of tomato. So, the other good, which is tomato, since I'm looking at the opportunity cost of pork, the other goes under three hours for pork divided by one hour for tomato is three. That means, what is that three? Three, three needs some unit next to it. Opportunity cost of one pound of pork is three pounds of tomato. So as you see, three pounds of tomato, we, uh, we express the opportunity cost in terms of other good. Okay? So you don't need to find now tomato for farmer because it's just the inverse. What you find fork is going to be, pork is going to be inverse for the tomato. So it's one over three uh, pounds of pork. For tomato, the opportunity cost. Now let's calculate for the rancher. Let's find opportunity cost for the rancher by using input approach. Okay, opportunity cost for pork. Now I'm looking at for rancher. I will use the rule again. The other goes under. Uh, rancher needs four hours to produce pork. And rancher needs four hours to produce tomato, so the other goes under, and we find one, and it is one pound of tomato. So I can get one pound of pork if I sacrifice one pound of tomato. That's that's the idea. Opportunity cost is always shows us how much you need to sacrifice from the other good. Okay, we find one here, and we don't need to calculate for the opportunity cost for tomato. It's just the inverse since it's one inverse of one is one. So the one uh, opportunity cost of tomato is one pound of pork. Now we can easily calculate looking at the numbers who has the comparative advantage for pork production. Okay, farmer or rancher. Okay, we will look at who has the lowest opportunity cost has the comparative advantage. As you see, rancher is one compared to farmer tree so a rancher should specialize in production of pork because rancher has comparative advantage for tomato production we have two numbers 0.33 and 1 which is lower as you see 0.33 is lower so here the farmer should specialize in production of tomatoes because he has the comparative advantage so this is how you find comparative advantage using the input approach now let's look at uh, another way of finding opportunity cost because some of the questions give you the pounds produced in 24 hours instead of the labor hours needed to produce. So we call this as output approach. In output approach, here on the top part of the table you will see pounds produce. That is the output produce in 24 hours or in some other units, but it should be here produced output should be given on the table and uh, the rule is very simple to find opportunity cost the rule is other goes over okay now let's see our example in this example farmer uh, uh, produce eight pounds of pork and 24 pounds of tomato rancher produces four pounds of tomato and rancher also produces i'm sorry six pounds of pork and six pounds of tomato so here the output that is given on the table is the number if each person devotes all the resources for the production of one good. If farmer devotes all the resources for production of pork, the maximum in a day the farmer can produce 8 pounds of pork. And the same thing if the farmer devotes all the resources uh, for production of tomatoes in a day, the maximum number uh, that the farmer can produce 24. So let's uh, apply the rule. Now I'm going to find the opportunity cost from farmer for farmer. We will do separately for farmer and rancher. Opportunity cost of pork. So I know that uh, the maximum opportun the, the maximum amount of pork that farmer can produce is 8. The maximum is uh, for tomato is 24. So what the rule says, other goes over. Other is tomato because I'm looking the opportunity cost for pork. Other goes over 24 divided by 8. Other is tomato, 8 is pork, and the result is 3. And don't forget opportunity cost in terms of other good, 3 pounds 
of tomatoes. Okay, now we don't need to calculate the tomatoes now anymore because it's just the inverse what we find for pork is going to be the inverse for the tomatoes. So it's going to be 1 over 3 which is 0.33 pounds of pork. Let's do it for rancher. It says other goes over other good if we are looking opportunity cost rancher. If now opportunity cost for pork other will be tomato so 6 goes over divided by 6 which is 1 pound of tomato okay you don't need to calculate for tomato because opportunity cost is just inverse uh, inverse of opportunity cost of pork is going to give you the opportunity cost of tomato but be careful for the units uh, the opportunity cost of tomatoes is 1 uh, pound of pork so given that, you will find out if you look at who has the lowest opportunity cost for pork, rancher has lowest opportunity cost. So rancher should specialize in production of pork. Uh, for tomatoes, farmer has the um, lowest opportunity cost. So farmer should specialize in tomatoes. You are comparing opportunity cost 0.33 to 1 to uh, make a decision. Okay. There is one more way to find opportunity cost. In some questions, you just have the graph, production possibility frontier, and you need to find out who has the comparative advantage. And maybe a question may ask you who, who, in which good farmer should specialize or in which good uh, rancher should specialize, something like that. So here, we need to, we can draw the production possibility frontier. It's not very hard, but most of the questions are giving you the production possibility frontier. How we are going to uh, draw the production possibility frontier? Since we have uh, 24 hours total, 24 hours total, and I know that each pound, to, I'm, now, I'm now talking about the farmer's production possibility frontier. Farmer requires three hours to produce one pound of pork. Given that each pound of pork requires three hours, the maximum amount, if the farmer devotes all the resources for pork, pork production, the maximum amount the farmer can get eight. So since all the resources are devoted for pork production, there is no left for the tomato. So eight zero. Or 0, 8 as one of the point here. This is pork. This is tomato. And we will do the same thing for tomato. If we if the farmer has 24 hours and each tomato production requires one hour, if he devotes all the hours for tomato production, he can the most get 24. Since he doesn't have any left for the pork, 24 to 0 is another point. And after finding these two points, you connect and you will find a production possibility frontier. This part was easy. Now we are going to find out the opportunity cost given that we have the production possibility frontier. Here, it's very easy given that we have this farmer, this production possibility frontier, 8 to 24. Okay. And uh, as you know, this is tomato, this is pork. Now I'm finding the pork pro, uh, pro opportunity cost. How we are going to find? I will take this angle, that pork and the PPF, and find out the tangent of this angle. Or you may say tangent is the ratio of length of opposite side divided by length of adjacent side. So it's going to be... 24 divided by 8, 3, 3 pounds of tomato, okay? Or if you want to calculate for tomato, tomato you will look at this angle instead of uh, this angle. Why this angle? Because it's the angle between the production possibility line and the tomato. That is the horizontal axis. And again, uh, it's going to be the ratio of uh, length of opposite side, 8 divided by adjacent side, which is 1 over 3. You don't even need to. If you find one of them, it's just the other one is inverse of the first one. And we can find for the rancher too. Here you see, uh, if I want to find for pork, it's the opposite length of opposite side divided by adjacent length of adjacent side, which is 1. You see, it's very easy. And if you want to find for tomato, it will be the length of opposite side, 6 divided by length of adjacent side, 1 pound of pork. So opportunity costs, just the slope. 
slope of the line. When you find the slope of the line, you find the opportunity cost, and the other good opportunity cost is just inverse of the first good. Okay. And maybe some questions may ask you what should be the price of trade. I explained it on the lecture slides, but I can repeat it here. As we said, uh, the price of the trade shouldn't be more than the opportunity cost, highest opportunity cost of the good for one producer, and shouldn't be lower than the lowest opportunity cost of the other producer. So to be clear, let's say in this example, uh, for pork production, if I can, let me see if I can make this smaller. No, I cannot make. Opportunity cost, I'm sorry. Opportunity cost of pork for farmer is three pounds of tomato. Tomato. And for rancher, opportunity cost of pork is one pound of tomato. So as you see, the price of the trade should be between these two opportunity costs. It cannot be higher than three. It cannot be lower than one. And it's true for tomato too. For farmer, opportunity cost of tomato is 0.33 pound of pork. And uh, for rancher, the opportunity cost of tomato is uh, one pound of pork so the price of the trade should be in between these two opportunity costs. I hope these examples will help you to do your assignments, upli assignments.